The story begins with Heiru and Kizuna engaging in wholesome closeness to charge their heart hybrids. After what seems an eternity of recharging, the duo exits the base and is greeted by Yurishia, who playfully chides them for always taking too long. Despite Heiru's defensive response, Yurishia doesn't seem to take it seriously and insists that it's time to get to work. Just as Heiru suits up, a massive mech suddenly appears ready to strike, but before it can make a move, it's quickly destroyed by Ayan. Before anyone can process what just happened, Ayan pulls Kizuna into a private room and requests him to charge her up immediately. While it may seem sudden, she explains it's necessary to acquire the forbidden weapon to win the upcoming battle. Ayan then assures Kizuna that she won't change no matter what happens and declares, let's climax hybrid. However, to understand how Kizuna found himself in this situation, we first need to go back to the beginning of his journey at the Academy Ataraxia. As Kizuna rides on the train, an old dream resurfaces in his mind, his mother leaving him as a child with the heartbreaking words, goodbye Kizuna, I don't need you anymore. Shaken from the nightmare, he realizes that he must be feeling incredibly nervous. He checks his email from his older sister, Riri, and sees that that his admission to Ataraxia has been confirmed, with instructions to report to HQ the following day. As Kizuna arrives at Ataraxia, he's greeted by a breathtaking view of a futuristic island. The place is buzzing with technology, sights, sounds, and a crowd of sophisticated students. While Kizuna tries to take in the overwhelming new environment, he spots Yurishia surrounded by a group of admirers and Hayuru in pursuit of a suspicious-looking guy. Feeling out of place and unsure of what to do, he notices a lewd magazine on the ground and assumes it must belong to the sus guy. Just then, Riri contacts him to confirm his arrival, but Kazuma expresses his doubts about being at Ataraxia again after being expelled before due to poor grades. Riri quickly dismisses his concerns, insisting that she needs him and his hybrid gear. Kazuna continues to ramble on until his sister's holograms appear in public to assert her authority, requesting that he shows up at HQ immediately. Embarrassed, Kazuna runs away, only to realize that he has no idea where HQ is located. As Kazuna wanders around lost, he finds himself by the ocean and takes a moment to gather his bearings. That's when he notices Ayan standing alone on a platform crying. The sight reminds reminds him of a young girl he once knew who was crying, but before he can dwell on the memory, Ayan notices him and leaps down to confront him. Kazuna is caught off guard by her sudden appearance and is left speechless. Ayan, with an unimpressed expression, questions his intelligence before demanding to know who he is. Kazuna introduces himself and then asks if she's a student at Ataraxia as well, to which Ayan responds with a deadpan tone, asking what else she could possibly be. She then further challenges Kazuna's intelligence by questioning if he believes she is some kind of weirdo who managed to sneak past security just to enjoy the scenery. It's unclear whether she's joking or not, but her haughty attitude quickly becomes apparent as she orders Kizuna to grovel at her feet and worship her. Kazuna is taken aback by her audacious attitude, but before he can say anything, their conversation is interrupted by the campus air raid siren. Kazuna ponders if it could be a false alarm considering Ataraxia's reputation for having an impenetrable defense. However, Ayn dismisses his naivety, emphasizing that there's no such thing as a false alarm in a place like Ataraxia, explaining that the enemy is here and he needs to run. And with that, as Ayn begins to undress, a wave of flustered confusion fusion washes over Kizuna, who becomes a witness to Ayan activating her heart hybrid gear pilot suit. However, there's a minor problem as her gear is running low on energy. Suddenly, a Magitech weapon charges towards them. Ayn draws her rifle and fires at the enemy, but her efforts have minimal effect. Undeterred, she propels herself toward the weapon and forcefully strikes its armor before firing at close range. With a resounding boom, the threat is eliminated and Ataraxia's renowned interception systems come online. Formidable turrets emerge and the students assume their assigned battle stations. Kazuna is impressed by Ayn's skill in neutralizing a Magitech weapon with a regular rifle, and she explains that protecting Ataraxia is part of a matter his mission, making it an expected duty. Just then, dozens of Magitech reinforcements approach and Aya instructs Kazuna to evacuate while she returns to the battlefield. The boy contemplates joining the fight but is haunted by his mother's cold words. While his heart hybrid gear is weak, he believes there must be something he can do with it. Summoning his courage, Kazuna musters his best effort to activate his gear, but he still lacks the confidence to do so. Just then, a colossal Magitech appears before him ready to launch an attack. However, a stroke of fortune arrives as Hayuru steps in to protect him. With a stern expression, Hayuru scolds him for not evacuating despite the emergency, reminding him of the seriousness of the situation. Suddenly, they find themselves surrounded by enemies, but luckily Yurishia intervenes with a wide-range attack, saving the two. True to her nature, she teases the pair before the two girls fly off back into combat. However, their situation worsens as a colossal spaceship suddenly appears in the sky, summoning more reinforcements for their adversaries. To make matters worse, as Ayn engages in combat, her energy rapidly depletes, causing her to fall from the sky. In a decisive moment, Kazuna activates his pilot gear with a single word and swiftly accelerates toward the falling Ayan, managing to catch her just in time. However, their descent leads to a crash landing in the forest, leaving Ayan in a weakened state and her suit damaged. Fortunately, Riri contacts Kazuna to provide him with guidance. If he truly wants to save Ayan, there's only one course of action, a gentle touch to her front. Riri emphasizes that it's not about degeneracy, but about connecting with her heart. With some hesitation, Kazuna carries out the instructions.
instructions, carefully examining Ayn's body for any wounds or injuries. As he does so, a reaction is triggered within Ayn, and a radiant light emanates from her, resulting in a successful recharge of her heart hybrid gear. Riri explains to Kizuna that the fusion of heart and love is the true power behind the heart hybrid gear. However, as the girl wakes up recharged, flustered, she quickly bids Kazuna goodnight, sending him flying away. With Ayn fully recharged, Riri orders her to return to the battle, and she single-handedly obliterates the entire enemy army, leaving everyone impressed. It becomes evident that Kazuna's unique power is vital in this war. Riri understands that while they have won this battle, the key to their success lies in the heart hybrid, the very tool they need to reclaim the mainland and restore the world they lost. Later that day, Riri delivers a brief history lesson to the academy. Fifteen years ago, a formidable incursion occurred when extraterrestrial entities from another dimension invaded the human world. The military forces of every nation suffered a devastating defeat, unable to identify or comprehend their mysterious adversaries. Two weeks after their arrival, the gates between dimensions abruptly closed, offering a glimmer of hope that the threat had dissipated. However, humanity's relief was short-lived as the beings resurfaced, forcing governments and a small fraction of the population to seek refuge on oceanic megafloats. For the rest, a tragic fate awaited. Rary then explains that the advancements of humanity have led to the development of heart hybrid gear suits, powerful tools capable of combating the formidable Magitech machinery. At the forefront of this innovation stands Amaterasu, Ataraxia's ace team, equipped and skilled to face any challenge. While these suits possess impressive power on their own, a groundbreaking innovation has recently emerged, offering a way to enhance their capabilities. She then introduces her brother as the pivotal figure in unlocking the full potential of the heart hybrid gear. As the room fills with anticipation, the display illuminates, revealing Kizuna's earlier recharging session with Ayan. The revelation leaves Hayuru, the chairwoman of the discipline committee flustered, but the commander proceeds with her explanation undeterred. Riri continues to explain the significance of this unorthodox practice. It appears that the energy lost in the heart hybrid gear during battles can be remarkably replenished through special connections with Kizuna. Therefore, those who aspire to join the elite force of Amateresu must embrace this practice as an essential aspect of their training. A shocking revelation leads to widespread scandal and hasty judgments for Kizuna. The next morning, Kizuna wakes up to find Ayan right on top of him. Flustered, the boy stammers and asks her what she's doing there, only to be met with a teasing response, confessing that she came to seduce him. Before he can process her words, Ayn's face turns red as she boldly asks Kazuna to engage in a heart hybrid. However, the recharging moment is abruptly interrupted by Hayuru, who knocks on the door and enters to offer an apology for her earlier behavior. To her surprise, she discovers another unexpected visitor in Kazuna's presence. Ayn takes responsibility for the situation, and in response, Hayuru undergoes a transformation into her pilot gear, ready to teach them a lesson. Before Kazuna can even utter a complete sentence, their dorm room succumbs to the explosive aftermath of their clash. Word quickly spreads about the dorm room explosion, stirring up a storm of gossip and disapproval among the girls. They can't bear the thought of Kizuma not only residing in the girls' dorm, but also attending classes with them. Interrupting the girls' animosity, Yurishi steps in, reminding them that hasty judgments are unjust. As Kizuna walks into the classroom accompanied by the two ladies, he is immediately greeted by Yurishia. Her simps erupt with offense as Kizuna dares to address Yurishia, a renowned celebrity and esteemed military ace, in an overly casual manner. Sensing the mounting hostility, Yurishia intervenes, calling for calm and proposing a demonstration to prove that bonding with Kizuna can indeed restore her hybrid energy. However, Hayuru flustered, immediately objects deeming such actions inappropriate for the classroom environment. Before the situation can escalate further, a petit student appears at the doorway, introducing herself as Sylvia Silkut, a first-year student tasked with summoning Kizuna for the commander herself. As they make their way, Sylvia takes Kizuna on a brief tour of the facility, where the groundbreaking technology behind the hybrid gears was developed. Among the group pictures displayed, Kazuna spots a familiar face, Dr. Hida Neyuda, his own mother and the brilliant mind behind the creation of these powerful gears. Finally reaching their destination, they enter the office where Riri introduces Kazuma to Chief Engineer Shikina Ki. Riri then hands Kazuna a portable terminal that doubles as his student handbook, equipped with a special feature. By tapping on the Amaterasu icon, he gains access to personal information about each team member and can monitor the status of their hybrid gears. Riri explains that maintaining a minimum hybrid count of 5% is crucial, as the gears become increasingly challenging to sustain beyond that threshold. The reason Kazuma's presence is so vital lies in the fact that natural recovery of the hybrid counts is a time-consuming process. However, with his gear, arrows, and its remarkable ability as heart hybrid, he possesses a significant advantage on the battlefield. To highlight his importance, Riri bestows him with the title of Captain of Team Amaterasu. Before Kazuna can express his thoughts on this unexpected appointment, Riri tasks Sylvia with providing updates on the team's progress for their upcoming mission. And so Kazuna embarks on his first mission as the team's captain, 
tasked with gathering vital data from a nearby island. Despite his determination, Hayuru remains skeptical of his leadership abilities and decides to fly off on a solo scouting mission to assess the area ahead. Meanwhile, Yurishi receives explicit instructions to refrain from engaging in combat due to her limited hybrid count, which stands at a mere 20%. The risk of depleting her energy reserves is high, but she finds herself more concerned about Kizuna's flying skills and decides to catch up with Hayuru. As Kazuna and Ayn are left behind, Ayn takes a moment to enlighten Kazuna about Hayuru's status as Japan's ace and Yurishia's as America's. When the boy curiously asks about her own role, she confidently proclaims herself as the world's ace, or better yet, the entire universe's. During the ongoing data recovery mission, Yurishia seizes an opportunity to have a private conversation with Kazuna. Away from the rest of the team, she asks about the specifications of his gear. Kazuna, unsure of the details, reveals his lack of kill count and battle experience, admitting that yesterday was his first. Slightly disappointed, Yurishi reveals her own impressive kill count of 300. Just as they prepare to rejoin the others, a dimensional gate unexpectedly materializes nearby. Reacting swiftly, Yurishi summons her pilot gear and engages the incoming enemies with precise gunfire. Despite the potential disruption of communication caused by these gates, gear users like them should still be able to maintain contact. However, to their dismay, the communication channels fail to function. As more and more Magitek units pour through the gates, Hayuru and Ayn find themselves trapped while Kizuma and Yurishi are left to confront the mounting threat. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Yurishia orders Kizuna to return and warn the others rather than get in her way and slow her down. Determined to face the enemy alone, she continues the fierce battle, but her hybrid count steadily decreases, dwindling to a perilously low 6%. To make matters worse, an enormous Dragory Category A Magitek weapon emerges. Weakened, and with her beam attacks proving ineffective, Yurishia's armor gradually deteriorates, rendering her immobile and vulnerable. Just as the enemy prepares for the final strike, Kazuna arrives in the nick of time, shielding Yurishia from the imminent blow and taking the hit. When she questions his selfless act, he simply replies that it is only natural for a man to come to a girl's aid when she is in danger. While urging Yurishia to flee, their bodies unintentionally make contact, resulting in an unexpected surge of energy that revitalizes her depleted hybrid count. As a result, Yurishia's power surges to unprecedented levels. Now fully revitalized, Yurishia unleashes her ultimate weapon, an infernal hellfire, obliterating the monstrous dragon with a single devastating strike. Just then, Hayuru and Ayan are freed, and as the communication channels are restored, they anxiously reach out to Yurishia. However, to their astonishment, they discover that she is not only unharmed, but in a better condition than ever before. Upon completing their mission, the team submits the valuable data they collected and departs from the facility. As they leave, Shikina asks Rari whether she will ever disclose the truth to her brother. The weight of this undisclosed secret weighs heavily on Rari's conscience. Meanwhile, Kazuna enters his room, only to be greeted by an unexpected sight. Ayan is waiting for him, scolding him for being late and expressing her intent for a heart hybrid. Before he can react, Yurishia bursts into the room, jumping on him and requesting a recharging session of her own. Ayn becomes furious, claiming her place as the first in line. Amidst the commotion, Hayuru arrives, concerned about Kizuna's well-being, but her sentence is cut short as she witnesses the scene before her. Flustered, Hayuru summons her suit, ready to teach the trio a lesson they won't forget. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more videos like this.